Hello everyone, my name is Frank Jean Bartosz, I'm a PhD candidate at the University of Amsterdam and I welcome you to the short tutorial on the Roadmap R package, a publication of best adjustment method my colleagues and I were developing over the years. The first question you might ask is, what does Roadmap stands for? And why the hell I say R instead of R? To answer my first question, Roadmap stands for Robust Bayesian Data Analysis. We named the method as such since Bayesian Model Average Publication Best Adjusted Meta Analysis or BMA, PV, AMA would have been way too mouthful. To answer the second question, I'm originally from Czechia. We pronounce R like that and somehow it got stuck in the lab. So, in this tutorial, I will outline the goal and philosophy of the robust Bayesian Meta Analysis methodology, how the methodology differs from other publication best adjustment methods, and how you can easily apply the methodology with the R package. So, starting with the philosophy behind Roma, I will borrow two tiles that my supervisor, supervisor uses in the introduction to Bayesian statistics. The first tile is never assert absolutely. In other words, the point is to be mindful of our assumptions. If we set them in stone and hard code them into our models, no amount of data can ever change our mind. The second tile is average across what you don't know. Assuming that we follow the first tile and we did not assert absolutely, so we kept our mind open about different plausible assumptions, how should we proceed to, to actually draw inference? The answer is simple. We just need to average across what we don't know, the uncertainty in our assumptions. In summary, and translated into the mathematic domain, the goal of Roma is to, en is to entertain different possible assumptions about the data and draw inference in a way that acknowledges this uncertainty. Some of the assumptions about the data are often discussed and are recommended into the standard significant test as the assumption about the presence versus absence of the effect and the presence versus absence of the additional between steady heterogeneity. So I will jump directly into the last domain, assumptions out publication bias. During this conference, you might have already heard, or you will still hear, several brilliant researchers describing different methods for publication bias adjustment. Robma builds upon some of those methods, or some of their versions, and later combines them together in accordance with the two main principles I mentioned previously. So I will just quickly summarize some of those other methods that, uh, that we use in Robma. And I like to divide them in two main categories. Models adjusting for the relationship between effect sizes and standard errors, such as Truman Phil, Pet Peace, and Endogenous King. And models adjusting for a selection of p values, such as 3 and 4 PSM, AK1, AK2, or special cases, such as p curve and p uniform. And in Robma, within the Robma framework, we incorporate Pet Peace, which conditionally adjusts for the relationship between effect sizes and standard errors, or standard error squared and PSM for uh, style selection models, which adjust for different publication best probabilities in different p-values intervals, such as marginal significant or non-significant p-values. As, uh, so as I said previously, Roma differs, for, differs from the remaining publication best adjustment methods in its ability to combine inference from multiple models. We use Bayesian model averaging, which allows us to combine models representing different assumptions of a data generating process, and weight their results according to their possible probabilities a point which I will illustrate in the next slides. Use base factors to quantify the evidence in favor of the presence or absence of effect at searching their publication bias. This represents a major advantage over the standard frequency methods, which can only reject my hypothesis. We use prior distributions to regularize the estimates or incorporate prior knowledge, which helps with convergence, especially for the publication bias adjustment models, which often suffer from poor convergence issues. And lastly, Bayesian evidence submitting is independent of the same sampling plan, which is especially hard to justify in meta-analysis where we don't control the sampling of the studies. The studies were conducted and we are just collecting them from the literature. To illustrate Bayesian model averaging, I will use this slide that we often use to describe Bayesian model averaging. You can think about Bayesian model averaging as a way of specifying different assumptions about the data, and here each assumption is represented by a different daemon. So in the mathematic setting, we have assumptions of the presence or absence of the effect. So we specify models that represent our assumptions about the presence or absence of the effect. Similarly, we can assess assumptions about the presence or absence of the additive heterogeneity. And lastly, but not least, the publication bias. So we specify additional two model types representing those different assumptions. Once we specified all of our assumptions via the different models, we feed our models with data and models that predict the data the best grow in uh, grow. And once the model grows, they also speak more loudly, so we can hear them more clearly, and we can base the inference more clearly on them. So here in this case, 
he said the model that represented the assumption of the presence of the bias is now the presence of, uh, of the effect is now the largest one. So we would be more inclined to conclude that there is presence of the effect. We can also visualize this in a different way. And uh, we can think about splitting of the model space and creating different models based on our assumptions. So in order to obtain our model average estimate, we can specify models that represents absence versus presence of the effect. So we split our model space into those two categories. Then we split our model space again according to the absence or presence of the heterogeneity. And then we split the model space again according to the model assumed presence or absence of publication bias. So in the end, we end up with eight different model types representing a combination of those different assumptions. But as I was talking previously, there are also different assumptions of presence of publication bias. So this demon that uh, represents our assumption of presence of publication bias is just an overall umbrella demon. How do we deal with this issue and how do we specify different models? Well, we can split this one model into different models and we specify models that assume different publication bias processes. For example, we can specify the PAD model that assumes that there is, a, that the, there is effect between effect size and their standard errors, or the piece model that assumes the relationship between standard error squared and uh, effect sizes. Or we can specify different, uh, different selection models, such as one-sided selection on significant p-values, or two-sided selection on significant and marginal significant p-values. There is, of course, much more uh, different assumptions about, uh, about the publication bias selection that we can do. And in the default trauma ensemble, we use these for the following eight different model types. We use the PET and PEACE publication bias models, select uh, adjustment, and we also specify six additional weight functions that combine uh, the assumptions about different p-value thresholds and whether, the, whether the, there's a rationality of the, of the selection. So that was the background about the package, and now I will move uh, about the methodology, and now I will move to, uh, forward to the package. The package uses uh, uh, MCMC estimation with JEX and runs the uh, run JEX package on the background and uh, to estimate the, the parameters of the models. And then we use marginal likelihood computation implemented via the braid sampling R package to compute the marginal likelihoods and to proceed with the updating of the model probabilities. The two main uh, features of the package is the prior function, which uh, creates a class that allows us to specify different assumptions about iterating processes via prior distributions. And we can, of course, summarize and print, uh, print uh, those objects with the print and pot function, and then the Robma fitting function itself that allows us to, S to specify the different model ensembles based on combination of our assumptions, and also does uh, the whole model averaging on background, so we don't really have to worry about it as users. To specify the different uh, different hypotheses about the presence, absence of the effect, the tragedy and publication bias, we can use uh, the prior effect, or effects now argument, and similarly for the heterogeneity and publication bias. The resulting object that's fitted with the Robma method can be then further interrogated with the summary print and plot functions. And I will now quickly illustrate the uh, usage of those functions and the output that we can obtain. So, the basic, uh, to how, how to use a package? Well, you need to open R, R Studio. You need to load the package. And assuming that you have a data set mine that already has the effect sizes and standard errors computed, you can just use the Robma function and place uh, the effect size and standard errors into the corresponding arguments. By default, the Robma estimates the Robma PSMA ensemble that's uh, outlined in one of the papers uh, that I will show you at the end of the, of the slides. And uh, this ensemble consists of 30, uh, 36 different models, which uh, is based on 18 models assuming absence of the effect, 18 models assuming absence of the heterogeneity, and 32 models assuming presence of the publication bias. And the summary functions allow us to print a summary of the fitted object. Here we see the different prior probabilities that are, uh, that are uh, set for different assumptions. 
resulting posterior probabilities of the different model components once the model was updated with the data and the corresponding inclusion based factors, which quantify our, our change in beliefs from parts of surveillance. In other words, the evidence data provided in regards uh, with respect to our models. So, for example, here we see inclusion based factor uh, of, of 0.48 for presence of the effect. We can turn it around and use uh, 1 over 0.048, which is approximately 2, which means that the models, that the data were two times more likely under most assuming absence of the effect than most assuming presence of the effect. Similarly, for the heterogeneity, we can see the data were more likely under most assuming absence of uh, heterogeneity than presence of the heterogeneity. And lastly, more or less assuming publication bias, here we see the data were more than 16 times more likely under most assuming presence of the publication bias. So we could summarize as a strong evidence for the presence of publication bias. At the, the second part of the summary table, we can see the model average estimates. And this table summarizes the model estimate average, model estimates average across all of the specified models. So including models assuming presence, earn, absence of the effect, heterogeneity, and publication bias. So overall, taking the complete uncertainty of the model space into account, we can, uh, we can provide the mean model average estimate of around 0.032 which is basically zero effect with the corresponding credible intervals from ranging from minus 0.51 to 0.218. To, uh, and some more estimates for the heterogeneous estimate tau, different publication best probabilities omega, and the PET and P coefficients. The package also provides different visualizations uh, before the visual, uh, different summaries. For example, we can specify a type argument and we can print summary of all of the fitted models, including their prime model probabilities, their marginal likelihoods, their posterior probabilities, and their inclusion base factors, which quantifies which models were supported, which data, uh, which quantifies which models were provided the most support for data. Here we see that uh, the model 8 and model 9 uh, describe the data the best and the data were 12 times more likely under the models assuming bad selection with uh, no effect and no heterogeneity than the remaining models. We can also look at the diagnostics, which is important since the package uses uh, MCMC estimation. And we can see the uh, MCMC error, we can see the minimum effect size, and we can see the maximum R hat for each of the specified models. If we want, we can also look into summaries for the individual estimated models. Here, the argument individual allows us to create summary of each individual model, which creates a long print of all 36 models. So here is only the snippet of the last uh, three models, where we can see this complete specification of the model, including the prior distributions and the posterior parameter estimates for each of the specified parameters. Moreover, if we fit the model, we can also create visual summaries. So the default function just plays the posterior distribution of the model, but we can uh, modify this function to provide a more informative summary or different visualizations. For example, we can create a ggplot object that can be further modified, or we can plot different parameters. For example, we can plot the heterogeneity parameter, we can overwrite with the prior distribution, and we can plot only as model average estimate for models assuming presence of, uh, of heterogeneity, which uh, is specified by the conditional. Then we can also use uh, the traditional plotting arguments as uh, limits, labels, etc. etc. The main advantage and the main feature, in my opinion, of the roadmap package is that you can completely modify the models that you want to fit. So, for example, you can specify a one set hypothesis test, which is uh, which is specified on much tighter effect size. For example, you do this by setting the prior effect argument uh, here in the in the Robma call, and you at uh, and you specify the prior object. You specify its normal distribution, it means zero, standard deviation of 0.3, and it's tracking it truncated from zero to infinity. So all the prior density is assigned only to positive values. Or you can specify only different publication bias adjustments. For example, here we specify only PET and P-style models. And you can specify this 
probably now, components assuming absence of the effect, heterogeneous to publication bus, or for the alternative hypothesis component assuming presence of the effect, heterogeneity, or publication bias. And you can combine all of those together. So, and of course, if you want to use uh, your raw methodology in teaching meta analysis, but your students uh, are not, uh, not skilled with R enough and you don't want to scare them away, we also implement uh, Robma in JESP uh, with additional publication based adjustment methods. So you can use the JESP uh, graphical user interface to run all of these analyses and also to, so, to specify all of these parameters with, uh, with your mouse and just point and click. So here are just a uh, few screenshots from JESP that visualize the corresponding summaries and output. And uh, before I end the talk, I will just provide a quick summary of uh, the Robma methodology with the main advantages being that Robma can incorporate uncertainty of the selected model, model with Bayesian model averaging. It can provide evidence for either null or the alternative hypothesis. It has better performance, especially with small sample sizes. It has the capacity to incorporate expert knowledge. It also has the potential for sequential updating of evidence. There are However, also some disadvantages. First, it's relatively slow, especially in comparison to the frequentist counterparts, because it requires slow MCMC sampling, and it can fail under strong PIG. If you want to learn more about the methodology, I would recommend some of our papers that we have written on the methodology or our tutorials. And uh, thank you very much for tuning in, and uh, have a nice rest of the conference.